Hello, hello, hello. Welcome back to another live VidIQ trading session. My name is Liron Segev. Thank you for being here. Thank you for hanging out here. You guys have been awesome. You've been really chatting up a storm. Been here for a little while. Mods are awesome. MC Red Panda is here. Karen Berkman is here. Tutorial Master Gaming is here. I saw a bunch of you. Oh, Lila is here as well. Yo, 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 what's up? Thank you for being here. Thank you for hanging out here. I always like to come on kind of 15 minutes early just to say hello, to see what everyone's up to. I love also watching the chat going past as everybody's like talking up a storm and saying, hey, I need this, I need that. That is what today is all about. Today is all about helping you guys succeed. It's all about practical stuff. You know, we have lots and lots of theory. We've got lots of um, stuff that's out there. But today I want to get practical. I want to help you guys grow your channel. So if you are new here, this is your first time here. And if you are... Um, Maybe you've just joined VidIQ, as I saw a whole bunch of people did. Let me know. Just drop a hashtag new in that chat. Drop a hashtag new if you are new here. If you're old, well, you kind of know what to do by now, right? You've been here before. So, yes, this is the way that this is divided up. It's divided up into two sections. Two sections. There we go. Two sections. It's divided up into two sections. The first section is going to be pre-recorded. I know, pre-recorded in a live stream. Who would have thought? Well, the reason we do that is we do that because it's learning mode, right? When you're in learning mode, you want to focus on what we're saying. You want to focus on everything I'm about to tell you because that is how you get more subscribers. That is how you get more views. And that is what everybody is here for. Whilst you are learning in learning mode, you don't want to be interrupted by me saying, hey, Octorius is here. Thank you for being a mod and hanging out here. Hi from the Philippines. Nice to see you. Gino is here as well. Um, who else we got? Blogger Tube is here. What's up? Nice to have you here. Okay. Octorius is very old. <laughs> you don't want to be interrupted by any of that because you're in learning mode, which is why that whole first section is pre-recorded. And the reason we pre-record it is because you can come back to it. You can, this will be available on our channel. So even once we're done, you go, oh, what did he mean by that second D? What was that um, autocomplete hack he showed us? That is why we pre-record it. You can come back. If you subscribe whilst we're doing this, if I catch your name on that little tiny screen, like Clint Sports, just subscribe. It will also pop up on my main screen. There's be a little bit of a delay between the two, but hey, everybody else gets to see your name in light, so at least you get that kind of shout out. So awesome. Thank you for hanging out here. Appreciate, hey, what's up? Um, who's here? Zenzarius is here. Sorry about before. Uh-oh, what did you do? It's an Ember Gaming. What's going on? <laughs> All right. So, guys, this is the divided up into two sections. So, that's the first bit. It's pre-recorded. It's me helping you go through step-by-step -step instructions, how to get more views, how to get more subscribers. That is what everybody is here for. Serial Killer, Serial Killer, Broad Walls, what's up? Nice to have you here. Harris Fam, what's up? How you doing? And... Um, the second bit. Now, the second bit is when we do Q&A. The second bit is where I come back on. You guys ask me a bunch of questions in the chat. You and I will chat. And the golden rule is until I run out of coffee or until um, my internet connection dies, you know, one of the two, um, I do live in an area where we have tornadoes and a couple of streams have been interrupted by that. So um, heads up in case the stream goes dead. You know why? It wasn't me just being lazy and disconnecting. And then you also, um, we have a, a drill today at 12 o'clock my time, which basically um, a, a tornado drill. So you might hear a siren, don't panic. As long as we've got internet, hey, I'm here for you guys. So if you are new and you've been here, you haven't been here before, as a gift to you in the description below, look out, I'm pointing, everybody look in the description. There you'll see vidIQ. We give you vidIQ for free, the full package, unlocked for 30 days. 30 days, guys, is a very long time. You can change your entire channel in 30 days. So if you haven't used it before, you haven't been here before, you're kind of feeling out the vidIQ vibe, go ahead, download, install that vidIQ plugin. You're going to get it for 30 days for absolute free. Remember, vidIQ also has a free option. So even if you don't want to pay for vidIQ, totally cool. Hang out with us. We have so much value for you to learn here. We do, um, we do these streams. On a Tuesday, we do channel audits, so you can submit your channel and maybe they'll, the guys will pick you out and then you can go through your channel with you. We also have a very active blog. We have a Discord server. So if you don't know what a Discord server is and you prefer a Facebook group, we've also got that. Discord is basically like these kind of chats that we have um, in the chat down here, but we're going to have them in a 
all the time, not just whenever we have a live stream. We do kind of thumbnail reviews. We do a whole bunch of good stuff in there. Go and join the Discord server. And then if you're into Tube Talk, let's try that again. If you're into podcast, I run a podcast called Tube Talk where I interview people, I interview guests, um, masterminds, like really deep stuff. We go deep into things like monetization, how to grow your channel. Tomorrow's episode is so hot. Ugh, it comes out every Thursday. And we're talking about five myth of algorithms that you need to kind of get out of your head seriously that one is gold 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 so go find tube talk you can go to vidiq.com slash tube talk or find tube talk in your favorite podcast application maybe one of the mods can drop a link to tube talk but just look up tube talk if you're not listening to podcasts you absolutely should great way we dive deep into topics we have great discussions ah just so much value in there as well so as we're getting ready, we got about, uh, I don't know, about 10, um, 10 minutes or so. Um, Sith Borg PG3D, is this pre-recorded? No, this is not pre-recorded. Um, whoever's asking, well, how, do I get, how do I grow a music channel? You can copy and paste your message as many times as you want. That's called spam. Our mods don't stand for spam or we don't stand for things like sub for sub. Don't do it. There's going to be a QA, and a as I said after the, um, the training where you can ask that kind of question. So make sure that you stick around for this. And if you keep on spamming the chat, well, our mods are simply gonna time you out because we're here to learn. If anybody thinks that this is boring and this is bad and I go, ooh, I just thought this was gonna be a quick hack and I'm gonna go next, next, finish and get a million views, dude, you're in the wrong place. Okay, you feel free to leave. We'll all wave you goodbye like this, say bye-bye, and then you're off you go and you can watch some kitty cats on the internet. I'm sure there's lots of things to entertain you. This is for real YouTubers. This is for, um, uh, oh, hold on. I've got to say hello to um, Super User Tech Mod. Thank you for hanging out here. This is cool. Um, yeah, let me just do what I told you I was going to do. There we go. It's done. So um, this is cool. This is for real YouTubers. This is for people who are going to do the work. Let me know, are you a real YouTuber? Are you here to do the work and grow your channel and get from five subscribers to 100 and 100 to 1,000, 1,000 to 5,000? If you are, drop a thumbs up in that chat. Let me see who the real YouTubers are. I don't want to, you know, if you're here just to bully and talk you know, nonsense to other people here, get out of here, leave. This is for real people. This is for people. Elizabeth Sampson says, yes, I am. She is excited. She's going to do this. Um, Fit Face 10. Yes. Thumbs up. Good. Love it. Crafts by um, Amaya. Thank you. Oh, hell yeah. <laughs> um, oh, by the way, I'm going to butcher your name. I'm just telling you. I'm not telling you perhaps. I'm telling you it's just going to happen. Um, guys, look at all these thumbs up. These are for people who are here to grow. How you, do you want to grow quickly? You can't. Sorry, whoever's asking for quick wins and quick little tips and are going to just amazingly do that and tomorrow they're going to get a million views and a million subscribers, not happening. Very, very few unicorns like that actually happen. We're here to do the real work. We're here for longevity. We're here for a long time. We're here to make sure that our channel grows. We're here to get into browse and suggested. We're here to get YouTube to love our channels. This is why we're here. If you're here for, come subscribe to my channel. Uh. Bye-bye. Feel free to leave. And I know that's not what companies are supposed to say, but guys, I'm here to help you. Today, I'm going to show you stuff that I do for small channels and huge channels. You know, I'll get on a call with someone with 100 subscribers, and then an hour later, I'll get onto a call with someone with 4 million subscribers. And guess what? Everything I'm going to show you today is what I show them. So I'm giving it to you, like free. Just, just take it. But you got to do the work still. I can't do the work for you. You still have to do that work. So um, I see lots of thumbs up. I think people are ready to rock and roll this. We've got a couple of more minutes um, that are coming coming through here. Um, basically, what that means is the cringy time when I have a sip of coffee. And if you haven't given the stream a thumbs up, now would be an amazing time to do that. If you're on social media, share the stream, tag at vidIQ, tag me as well, at Leron underscore Segev. If you're on Twitter, it's down here keep pointing the wrong direction. It's down here somewhere. Tag me on um, Twitter as well. And um, let's share the stream because we know other creators really want that help. So let's do that. I'm going to look at you awkwardly whilst you give the stream a thumbs up and you go ahead and share it. Hmm, watch this. It gets weird. Okay. So I don't know if that worked. 
and uh, yeah it is what it is but guys this is what we're gonna do we're gonna absolutely rock this so for those who are just joining now I see a whole bunch of people have just joined so it's divided into two the first section is pre-recorded it's full training in that section what I normally see is people just asking questions in their chat that's great but wait for the Q&A for that because that's where I'm here to help you the training is all about really the stuff that you need to know if you want to know how to get ranked if you want to know how to go viral, if you want to know how to get views, if you want to know how to get real subscribers who actually care about your content, this is what this training is for. You have a choice now. You can kind of stand and just hang out in the chat, and that's cool. You know, have a great chat. Brilliant. Or we can focus and actually do the work, because that is what today is about. I'm cool either way. I'm, uh, whichever way you want to work it, everybody's different. Everybody's at a different stage of their journey. But what I don't want to see is I don't want to see someone say, I only have 100 subscribers. That word only needs to be kicked out of that, out of that vocab immediately. The reason, because 100 subscribers is not. It's 100 people. It's 100 people who want to see your content. That is friggin' awesome. Okay? If you get 50 people who want to see your content, friggin' awesome. That is why we're here. We're here to share our content with the world. And if someone's willing to hit that subscribe button and watch your channel, brilliant. Embrace every single person. Not a number, it's a person. When you start thinking about that, well, that works really well. So Cherry XE is now spamming the, um, the chat, which I can see. And guess what one of our mods is going to do? They're going to put you in lovely time out. And then we don't need this kind of distraction because we're here to work, right? That is the bottom line. At the end of the day, we're here to work. We're going to do the work. We're going to put in the effort. But guys, let's work smart. Instead of working just hard, because I know every, every single YouTuber I know works very hard. Lots of time editing. Lots of time with thumbnails. Lots of time with titles. They know they really want to put the best out there. Well, let's do it the smart way. Let's do it in a way that's going to get you those views. It's going to get you those um, that YouTube love. YouTube, by the way, loves small channels. This nonsense of YouTube of saying I only prefer big channels is absolutely nonsense. YouTube, you know what YouTube loves the best? Good content, quality content. And I'm going to show you all this coming up. It's about the three D's of YouTube. Uh, oh, excuse me, coffee. Mm. It's about the three D's of YouTube. And that is what we're going to do today. The three D's of YouTube. And you have to get all three in order to grow your channel. I have worked with, ah, okay, hold on. I've got to do this. The goat, whatever your dude's name is. See, put user in timeout. Bye-bye. She's going to spam us. We're going to wave goodbye to you. We, that's how we roll here. We here to have fun. We here to enjoy ourselves. I don't need nonsense of people going blah, 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 blah in their chat. We want to be people who are here to do the work. It's distracting. It's irritating. I do not understand why people like this hang out here. Just if you're not prepared to do the work, why are you here? Goodbye. Cheers. I'm sure there's other kitty catty videos you can watch. I love cat videos, but yeah, we had to work, right? So guys, stream is going to launch in about two more minutes because that's when we go live. It's at the top of the hour. I understand some people are around the world. It's very late for you at night and I really appreciate you being here. Remember, this will be available on the replay. So in case you want to go to sleep, totally understandable. Go sleep, wake up in the morning. It will be here ready for you. You can go through it. So, no spam, no sub for sub. First bit is pre-recorded. It's full on training. It's deep training. It's about all the bits you need to know to rank your videos. That's what we dive into. It's practical, real steps. I have done this, now do that, and then do the next thing, and then do the next thing. This is what it's all about today. That is, this is the real work that YouTubers have to put in. If you're willing to put it in, you're gonna see that result simple as that you've got to work hard but you've got to work smart and i'm going to show you all that right now um the second bit is i come back on i come back on we have a chat i drink a lot of coffee um as long as we have internet i'll answer your questions you guys um, ask you know, about your channel monetization um, watch time retention thumbnail all of those glorious questions we'll dive all of them into this how do I grow the gaming channel? How do I grow a music channel? How, what do I do? All of that, just it, it's going to come up. Do not ask me at the end, how do I get more subscribers and more views? Because my answer will be, watch this training. Because I'm about to tell you how to get more subscribers, how to get more views. 
the correct way, the way that YouTube loves, the way that it actually works. How do I know it works? I've done it on my personal channel. I've done it for many, many channels. I can't even tell you how many channels by now. Lots of channels have grown because they followed the steps. Do we know something that you guys don't? No, we just know how to work the recipe, the process. And I'm gonna show that with you. Should today, oh, we're gonna have fun. It's already top of the hour. I think we're ready to rock and roll. If you guys are ready, let's do this. I suppose um, I'm waiting for you to start. Yeah, I'm also waiting to start, but we, you know, we have a time, that's when we go live, and that's when we talk about how to do titles, descriptions, tags, thumbnails, the three Ds of YouTube. All of that is coming up. Let's do this. Thumbs up in the chat if you guys are ready to rock and roll. I'm gonna have a sip of coffee and then we'll get going. And by the way, yes, this will, will work across every niche, every industry, absolutely everything, whether you're sewing, um, sewing something, knitting something, growing a gaming channel, under basket, water weaving, by the way, that's a thing. All of that is gonna be covered today. It will work for absolutely everyone. So if we're ready to go, oh, look at those thumbs ups coming in. Everybody's ready, let's rock and roll. I'm gonna do the pointless countdown. I call it pointless because exactly what it is, but it kind of gets us into the mindset of we're ready to do this. So if you don't have VidIQ, in the description, go and grab that. Free of charge, 30 days, unlock your channel, unlock everything you need to. Right now, it's about the pre-recorded training where I take you through step, by step instruction. A brilliant new tool called the thumbnail preview. You will love it. And I'm gonna show you all of this and how to use it. So if we're ready to do this, let's do this. Let's rock and roll. And I'm gonna do it in, oh, hold on, gotta press the buttons here. Okay, you ready? So in five, four, I don't know why I do this. Three, two, one, let's do this. VidIQ. VidIQ. VidIQ.com. Hello everybody, welcome and thank you for joining us for another vidIQ training session. My name is Liron Segev. I am the Director of Customer Success here at vidIQ, which means that every day I work with creators big and small, helping them level up their channels, get more subscribers, more views in less time, and that's exactly what I'm going to do with you today. Now today is not about theory. It's not about making good thumbnails, because we know all of that, and if you missed out on any of that information, on the vidIQ channel, which you've just subscribed to if you haven't already. We have so much value, so many videos about those particular topics. You can go and consume them at your own time. But today it's not about that. Today it's about the practical steps. You know, the thing at vidIQ is a lot of us have our own channels. We're all creators. And therefore we understand the frustrations that you go through as a creator. We've all been there. We all know the frustration of filming a video, spending time editing it, uploading it and then uh, nothing happens or a handful of views ridiculously frustrating and almost like demoralizing do i really want to do this youtube thing so that is what today's training is all about the practical steps now, if you don't have vidIQ that's perfectly fine you can still hang out with us no problem if you are here as a way of saying thank you in the description below there's a link to the vidIQ tools go and download them and then for the next 30 days it will just unlock all the beautiful goodness that's in your channel. And believe it or not, there is goodness. And I'm gonna show you how to tap into that. And that's what these tools are about. They're about unlocking that frustration, unlocking the goodness that you have, unlocking the way forward. How do you build your channel? How do you grow? How do you get your audience? And this is what I'm gonna show you today. So YouTube is made up of three Ds. And when you can unlock all three of those, that is when magic happens. That is when your channel really blows up. It happened to me, I can tell you from firsthand experience on my channel. So this is critical, critical stuff. And that's why I wanna share this with you. Very excited to do this. So the first D is all about discovery. If YouTube doesn't know about your latest creation, it could be absolutely mind-blowingly amazing. Well, it's not gonna discover it. And therefore, it's, people are not gonna know about it. Therefore, people are not gonna find it. And therefore, it's gonna remain with very, very little views. And again, we're gonna go deep into all of this. So the first D is about discovery. The second D is about delivery. Are you as a content creator delivering value to your audience? YouTube looks at that. So what I mean by that is, are you using clickbait to get people just to click and then they don't like it and they leave? Are people loving your content so they're watching so much more of us and they're commenting and giving you those thumbs up? That's important. And that's the second D. It's about delivery. And then finally, the third D is about distribution. When you get those first two rights, YouTube looks at those signals and says, okay, got a video here. 
it's being loved by its own audience, let me go and distribute this to a bigger audience. Let me go find a new audience for this video. Oh, and when that happens, that is when you get those fresh new eyes on those videos. And that is when your subscribers grow. And that is when your views grow. Okay, so where do all good YouTube videos begin? They begin in the kitchen. Of course, that's where all good YouTube videos begin, right? If I tell you right now, stop what you're doing, go to your kitchen, go to open up some random cupboards, take up some random ingredients, mix them all together, and then stick it in your oven, what are the odds that a beautiful pizza is going to come out of that? Mm, probably not much, right? But if I tell you, hold on, don't grab random ingredients. I need you to grab the following. There's some tomato sauce. There is some flour. There is some eggs. There is cheese. There is olives. There is whatever. And I give you the steps and I tell you, this is, these are all the steps to get the dough going. And then you get the sauce and then you get the cheese on top and then stick it in the oven for this temperature, for this long. Then what are the odds of a beautiful pizza coming out? Beautiful and amazing. The way we all approach our videos is the first bit. We take our camera, we run out, we shoot hours and hours of video, we come home, we drop it onto our computers, we edit it, we copy and move scenes around, we add B-roll, it looks amazing, we slap a title, slap a thumbnail, upload it, and then uh, hope that something comes out of that, hope that a beautiful pizza comes out of that and people love it. Uh, that's not going to work, is it? But so that's why I want to focus today on the exact steps that you need to take to follow the recipe, follow the YouTube recipe, like we did with our pizza. I want to do, give you the exact those steps that you need to do for your next video. Okay, so it's going to get good. There's lots of information. It's going to come at you fast and furious. Again, if you don't have vidIQ, it's in the description below. Grab it before we get going. This will be available on the replay. So in case you missed anything or I speak too fast or you need more information, no problem. Don't worry. After the session is done, you can come back to this. Okay, so now that we have pizza in mind and a lot of us are going to get hungry round about now, well, that's good motivation to come go through this training with me. So you ready for this? Let's start off with making a video pizza. We're going to make a video about pizza. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my search bar. This is where I start. I start by putting in my word or my phrase. And the first thing I want to understand is the landscape. Now remember, we're using pizza here. Of course, this will work for absolutely anything else. I just want to show you an example. We all understand because, well, you get this basically around the world. So let's have a look at this. So pizza is my key phrase. I'm going to make a video about pizza. I'm not really sure what yet, but I know that that's what I want to focus on. So vidIQ reveals a whole bunch of information. Highest view video, 28 million. Okay, that looks good. Top creator is a channel called Tasty. Okay, interesting. But look at this, volume. The volume here is 82. It's in the green. What does that mean? It means there's lots of people who are actually searching for our particular key phrase, our pizza key phrase. Do you go out and make a video immediately? No, because you got to look at competition and you can see the competition is very high. What does that mean? Lots of people are searching for pizza related content, but there's also lots of channels, lots of videos delivering. So, Therefore, it's going to be very, very difficult to make a video just about pizza. So do we just give up? No. Here is where this tip comes into play. Now, this is important. This actually will change your research. We're going to do this. We're going to go out here to our search bar. And what we're going to do is the alphabet walkthrough. So pizza space A, B, C, D. What is it showing you? It's showing me autocomplete. In other words, so many people have searched for the word pizza and dough recipe that YouTube makes it a little bit easier for the next person to start typing pizza space D. We assume they're going to go for this dough recipe. Oh, look, there it is. Dough without yeast. Pizza dough recipe without yeast. How does this help us? How does this help us as content creators? Well, this is a good indication of what people are searching for. If people are searching for pizza dough recipe without yeast, that gives us a beautiful direction for our video. We're going to make a video about pizza dough and we're going to use the word dough, recipe and yeast because those seem to be the popular words. Remember, we're only on the D. E, F, G. Look how many titles come up here that you can actually use 
for your video. This is where you start really understanding YouTube search. So remember, YouTube is a search engine. What do you do in search engines? You ask questions. So don't forget, don't just do the A, B, C, D walkthrough. Go to the beginning of the phrase and then type in the what. What pizza looks like around the world? What's pizza to your body? What pizza is the best? What? Where? When? Why? How? Okay. And all of a sudden, look at this. How Pizza Hut makes pizza. How pizza rolls are made. How pizza is made in Domino's. What does this show you? It's telling you what people are currently searching for. Go and make your videos based on these. That's how you get those initial eyeballs, those initial reactions, because you're answering somebody's question. Autocomplete is a beautiful way to understand the YouTube algorithm and what people are currently searching for. If you can marry up a video title to a query, that is where you win. Remember, we're still in research mode, okay? So let's have a look at this video. This video, it says, the best homemade pizza you'll ever eat. Views, 19 million views on this. So by most indication, 19 million views is a good views for your video. I mean, we all would love 19 million views on our videos. But does that mean that this channel is winning? In other words, is this a good video for this channel? Because remember, this channel has got 18 million subscribers. So is 19 million views like uh, a regular video for them? Or is it a real video for them? Well, let's find out. So 19 million views. Here is what the problem with views is. Views doesn't take time into account. In other words, this video was launched in 2018. Did it get a all of its views right at the beginning? Or did it take years to get to these numbers? Did it take a day, a month, a week, a year, three years? How many years did it take to get to this 19 million? Why is that important? Because it tells me about relevancy. Is this video relevant today? So for example, the iPhone 1 or the Samsung Note 1 phone that came out. Now, I'm a tech geek, so I'm going to use technology examples. But let's just say that video came out of the iPhone 1. When it came out, millions of views on those videos. But is it still relevant today? That's the question. How many people are still searching today? If all you saw was that this video has got 19 million views and you went ahead and made a video all around this topic, well, you're going to be missing the boat here because this might not be relevant today. So what do we do? We'll show you something called VPH, views per hour. And essentially what views per hour is, it's telling me right now how many people are watching this video. So as you can clearly see, there is still lots and lots and lots of interest in this particular video, in this particular title. And in fact, if you look at historical trends, you can see it was doing okay, 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 and all of a sudden, boom, a big, big surge. It's obviously the times that we're in, people are interested in making homemade pizza, and therefore this video is getting all that beautiful momentum. So remember, evergreen content, this is another example of something that was live in 2018. And look, it just picked, was okay, okay, and now just picked up traction. So very important to remember the evergreen content. So when you launch a video, don't panic straight away if it doesn't get those beautiful views. You just never know when your time will come. This is two years later, and look at those numbers. Beautiful, just popping. So, again, a total number of views doesn't indicate if it's a good video today. So we show you views per hour. Very, very important. The next thing we look at is, did they use any Reddit? So there's a couple of Reddit instructions, a little bit of Facebook going on here. But look at this. This is beautiful. This tells me that, remember I asked you earlier, 19 million views on a channel with 18 million subscribers, is this okay or not? Is this a great video, or a bad video? Well, we'll tell you that. The compare views in the first 28 hour days tools is exactly the tool that you need. Because if you have a look at this, you say, this video, I want to compare it to this channel's average. This channel's average is a little pink at the bottom. This video is the one in blue after one day, two days, three days, seven days. So now we can see, after seven days, this channel typically gets 122,000 to 194,000 views on a video. But this video got a 2.6 million views in the first seven days. What does this tell me? 
it's telling me this is an outlier video. This is an exceptional, exceptional video. And therefore, I am absolutely going to research this video, the title, the thumbnail, the description, the tags that they used. Look what it's ranking for. I want to understand all of this so that I can make my video as close to this as possible. If YouTube is currently suggesting this video and it's an outlier video for this channel, well, I am one to be able to get in on that. Now, this video tells you more. This, sorry, this tool tells you more. Not just this channel's average, you can actually look at your channel's average. So this video compared to your own channel's average. This video compared to the last video you watched. Any video, any playlist, any channel, and then the competitor's average. And I'll show you that shortly as well. So very, 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 very powerful tool. It tells you exactly what you need to know. This is a good video, lots of views per hour, trending topic, still relevant today. I am absolutely going to investigate this if I was making a pizza video. Remember, we're still in research mode. We're still in the first D, that first D of being discovered. So we may have some title ideas. What about thumbnails? What should we be going after? Well, in research mode, we still want to be discovered. We go to the vidIQ tools on the left hand side and there's something called competitors. Click on that. And this essentially loads up all the people who are doing similar stuff to you in your industry. This for us, this is the people that we work with, people that we attend events with, other YouTube teachers here, and we want to understand what's going on. Now, why is it important? Because YouTube knows that we don't watch one video about one item and then go make a buying decision. We watch multiple videos about the same item. Therefore, what we want to understand is what's going on in the industry. What are our competitors doing? Remember, this is sorted by views per hour. So I can see which topic is getting more attention. I want to see what their thumbnails are like. Are they still good? Lots of text, still faces. Um, what's their titles? Are they long titles? Are they short titles? This all this gives me good indication. Am I still on the right track? Now, remember, in your industry, it's going to be different people. You have to load up yourself, the people that you look up to, people you want to work with. And when you see it, you start getting a good picture and a good idea. Now, I'll tell you what else it does. YouTube is all about trends. YouTube knows that when a trend comes out, it becomes a hot topic. People are talking about it. People are researching it. And therefore, it's going to serve more and more content. So imagine in this industry, if we saw that everybody's talking about a specific topic, a specific YouTube tool, maybe something new has come out. And our competitors have started talking about that. Well, of course, we're going to understand that. We want to get in on that action as well. In your industry, it's going to be exactly the same. Maybe everybody is starting to talk about the upcoming big vacation or the upcoming big holiday in your country. Maybe it's Mother's Day, whatever it may be. If people are starting to talk about it, it means the industry is starting to talk about that particular holiday. In other words, search results are coming in. In other words, you can start jumping on this. So it's a good way to keep an eye on your competitors, keep an eye on what they're doing, what are they saying, what, are they, what do they look like, and is there anything that you need to change? Don't go and copy them because obviously that's not a good strategy, but go and understand what's going on. Know your competitive landscape. Very, very important. So that is competitors. Go and load up a whole bunch and the value here is insane, especially when it comes to trend because trend is where it's at. The next tool I'm going to show you is called the trend alerts. Now, trend alerts, this is very important. Um, trend alerts changes your channel. Here is why. Let just, you give it a, a, an alert name and then you say, here's my keyword. So basically what I'm saying to vidIQ is anytime somebody makes a video with this keyword in from any of these competitors or from the whole of YouTube, when that video gets more than, let's just say a thousand views per hour, remember per hour, not in total. When that video gets more than a thousand views per hour each week, send me a report that looks like this. Now, why is this important and how does this change channels? Well, what will land up happening is you'll see that a certain style of video has gone from 1000 views per hour to 5000 views per hour to 10,000 views per hour. Okay, something is happening. Something's happening over there. I need to understand that because it's going to be your keyword. So it's going to be related to your industry. You know what those big keywords are. And as soon as you see them, you know that you want to jump in on that action and get in on the trend really, really, really early on. So many channels have changed completely. 
because they realize that a certain keyword has become hot, is just starting to roll. They've seen channels go from 500 views per hour on a video to 1,000 views per hour on a video to 5,000 views per hour on a video. Well, it means there's a big hunger for that keyword. Could I make a video with that keyword? Could I make on that topic? And if you can, you can jump in on those trends really, really, really early on. Remember, we're still in the D for discovery. We've done our research. We've done the what, where, when, how. We've done the alphabet walkthrough with our keywords. We have seen which are cool videos. We've marked them so we know to go back to them and research them. We've seen what our competitors are doing, our trend alert sets. The next thing is most viewed. And essentially what most viewed is, is everything that's going on that's happening on YouTube right now. Now, before you tell me, yes, there is the trending page, we're very well aware of it, but this is different. Do you know why? Because this sorts out the hot videos on YouTube sorted by views per hour. This video is getting 300,000 views per hour. This video is 146,000 views per hour. So why is this important? Well, first of all, you're in the YouTube game. You need to know what's working on YouTube as a whole, even when it's out of your niche. And here you can see that certain topics are working really, really well. What's the thumbnail like? How clean is it? How much text is there? What is their titles? Is it long? Is it short? All these questions you need to be asking all the time so you can understand how clean these are. Look at this. Just something I can pick up immediately. There's no text. Look at that. Very little text, if any. Big bright colors. And these are kids content. And they're still doing well on YouTube. Again, even this. Child Wild, Chad Wild Clay. Great channel. No text. Uh, Markay is brandly to do with technology. The only text here is the $3.99 the price. You're learning all the time from what's going on. Now you can take it a step further. What you can say is, look, um, love this guy, but he's got a channel with, what, millions and millions of subscribers. It's nowhere near where I am. No problem. You go down here to channel subs and you can change it. You can say, show me only channels that are in the bronze, 10 to 100,000 subs or 100,000 to a million subs, something closer to your world, so that you can learn what's working in that industry, in that subscriber range, and make videos accordingly. You can also you can do search re research here with search terms, the various categories, the various countries, and all of this helps you with being discovered. And that's the most important thing, doing that research before you touch that camera, before you rush out and spend hours of your life making a video that is not gonna get those views. Spend the time rather doing this here. Okay, so we've seen the videos. We've looked at our competitors. We have done our research. We've looked at what's trending. We've looked at what's working on the whole of YouTube. We looked at it in our research mode. We now armed. We go and create our video. Okay, now that we've got our video, what do we do next? Okay, so you've done your video, you've uploaded it, and now it's time to feed it all that beautiful, juicy information in your titles, your descriptions, your tags, and your thumbnail. So let's look at these tools. The most important thing for me when it comes to YouTube is the thumbnail and the title in combination. Not in isolation, but together. Why? Well, here's what happens. When somebody's doing a search on YouTube, they perhaps will scroll down and your thumbnail has one mission to get them to stop and go, oh, what's that? And then they glance over and they look at your title and together they're either going to decide to click or not to click. A great thumbnail with a rubbish title is not enticing enough and vice versa. An amazing title, but with a thumbnail that doesn't get somebody's attention also not good enough. They're not going to stop and click, but it's got to work together. So this is one of the greatest tools. I love this completely. It's called Preview in Search Results. This is brand new, and this is ah, this will be a game changer as well. So what do we do? We want to understand how will my video look like when other people are doing a search. So let's just say the question is how to get a thousand subscribers. So let's write that in. How to get a thousand subscribers and I'm going to say preview and search now look what's going to happen we're going to come up here this is the video and this shows me the videos other videos in this industry now we're very lucky because our next video is actually a vidIQ video so I am asking myself the question will this thumbnail get people to stop and click 
compared to the other videos around it. That is beautiful. Also, I get to see everybody else's titles. I can make changes right here. And not only can I make changes to the title, I can click on preview changes and it would actually change it right here as well. So now I can constantly am optimizing my video to be discovered. So remember I said it's your thumbnail and your title in combination because that's going to get someone to stop what they're doing like this and go, oh, what's this? That is colorful. That's got text, got information. I want to click on that. Now remember, it shows it to me on the search screen. But we all know that home screen is pretty big on YouTube too. That's where a lot of people are finding their information. So now it shows me, look what my icon looks like, my graphics look like on the home screen. Look how it just stands out. It's all the colors. And that's why people click on this video. And again, I can see this on desktop. I can see this in tablet mode. And I can see it on mobile as well. I want to make sure I'm continuously, continuously optimizing my search results because this is where you win. It's in about understanding what your thumbnail and your title look like together compared to the people above you and the people below you. Because as soon as you can get someone's attention with an amazing thumbnail and a great title, this is where you win the click. I love this preview results. Go ahead and use them continuously. You can search for any phrases. We can optimize it here. How to get 100 subs. Let's just say that's the get the results there. Okay, uh, now you can see we're very similar to this. So if I was going after the first 100 subs, I will perhaps not use the same the same thumbnail because it's too similar to this. I would use, oh, <laughs> another Vidaq one. See how different that is? And that's what you want, how to stop somebody's attention to be able to go, wow, what is this click? Now, remember that YouTube knows what your video is about. It has got enough AI systems to understand the content. It's automatically captioning your videos. So it's got all this data. So title and descriptions and your tags simply augment what YouTube already knows. It makes sure that it allocated it correctly. So we always want to write for humans. Don't try keyword stuff this with lots of keywords just to try and get YouTube algorithm to jump around. That used to work back in the day. It does not work anymore because YouTube's smarter than that. So write for people. Write in a way that somebody will want to click. Your description. Put some effort into your description. So give a great opening line because that's the preview line that people will see. And then now timestamps. Make sure you spend time putting in timestamps. YouTube is experimenting with new features. There's things like um, chapters. We're going to see more and more of this come into play, especially as we go to more towards voice. So make sure that you put in timestamps into your videos, helping YouTube help you. So when someone on Google does a quick search of how to double down on quality or quantity, well, maybe this is a good enough phrase that YouTube will recommend this video. So you need to spend time and effort in here. So uh, which keywords do you use? Well, this is where tags come in. So whilst tags aren't as important as they used to be, you absolutely still need to be using tags. So you start typing here, Mother's, uh, Mother's Day. And here you can already see a whole bunch of Mother's Day related tags that pop in here. So let's select this one. But watch this. Okay. Click into here. Now we've got a whole wealth of information. Now what we can see here is Mother's Day gift ideas. But look at this. We also show you the related keywords. We show you the most used keywords, the search volume, the competition, the overall score. And all of these are basically searchable and indexable so that you can go through and say, well, which tags do I want to use? Mother's Day gift looks like a good one. And simply add, click on the plus button and it will add that tag. All of this information simply helps your video to get better classification. And even though tags by themselves don't matter, when you feed the beast, it helps you with your video. So many people are just ignoring tags altogether, and that is a big, big mistake. It's all about building those relationships between your videos and other videos, other search results, and tags help you do that. Okay, so use your tags. Now, the big thing here is when do you make your video public? When do you launch your video? So YouTube looks at various factors. 
And when it knows about your video, it knows the content, it knows what your title is, it knows what your thumbnail's like, what it doesn't know, if it's a good or a bad video, it has no idea. So it looks for signals. And one of those signals is, do people watch when you make it public? So the best way to know that is to launch your video during a time when people are actually online. So this tool tells you that, best time to publish, broken down by day. And it knows that if I'm gonna launch a video on a Wednesday, my audience happens to be online between these times. So I should probably launch my video just before that so to get all that upwards traffic as people are joining. This is an important signal. If you make your video available and people are watching it instantly, YouTube says, oh, there must be value here because people are watching and they're watching for more than 50%. So I wanna be able to translate that into maybe trying with another audience. And that's where distribution starts to happen because YouTube is getting all these glorious signals to say that this is a good quality video. And that is how you unlock distribution. So launch your video when your public is online. And a good ninja tip here is try not to launch whenever you can schedule a video. What I mean by that is you can schedule a video to launch on the hour or every half an hour or even every 15 minutes. Or so 9, 9.15, 9.30, for example. But if you launch your video at 9.48, it's such a weird time that no other companies schedule their videos to launch at that because you can't. So now you have an opportunity to stand out amongst those notifications. Less notifications, more odds, the odds are much better that your subscriber actually gets the notifications. So just a little bonus tip there. As we scroll further down, a lot of vidIQ um, SEO scores that are right here. We've even got the check the checklist. Let me make sure that I've done everything. Have I got a card? Have I got an end screen? We don't enable monetization, so I'm obviously going to see the X. Have I shared it to on Twitter? Made it public, etc. So we're just keeping you on track. A nice little running track to make sure that you're ticking all the right boxes and ticking all the right marks here. Okay, so we've done our research. We're going to get discovered. We've done the first D. The second D is that we are now launched our video. We've launched it at the right time. And now we hope it's up to YouTube to distribute that video as much as possible. We're obviously going to help it along with social media and our own efforts to get the video seen. But we're hoping the YouTube algorithm kicks in. Well, YouTube rewards people that deliver. So it's quality over quantity. How do we know if you're delivering? Well, this is where this tool comes in. It's called the Channel Audit Tool. Now, this is the tool I was missing when I was building up my YouTube channel because I needed something that I can push a button that will tell me what's working and what isn't working. I don't know about you, but I don't want to spend 10 hours of my day trying to decipher little numbers and exporting reports from YouTube Analytics to try to work out what's working and what isn't. I want to push a button, and this is what this does. The Channel Audit does exactly that. It says, okay, over the last 30 days, is my channel growing or shrinking? So I can see views, subscribers, watch time. If it's going up, great. If it's going down, why? Did maybe I have a viral video last month and I don't have one this month? Okay, so I understand. So it gives me that information. The next thing I want to look at is content to double down on. And essentially what that means, this is content that you need to make more of. People love this content. It's broken down into views per hour. Which videos are giving me views per hour? How many views per hour does each one of these videos give me? What's the engagement rate? What's the views? Subscribers gained. How many subscribers per 1,000 views? So it gives me an idea of what's bringing in my subscribers to my channel. And now I know that if people are loving this content, uh, make more of this content. Simple as that. And down here, total watch time, average watch time, top retention. These are the stuff that YouTube loves and YouTube rewards you for it. So if you can mix these together, find the trend on your channel and see what works and make more of that. You'll very quickly discover these certain elements of, that your channel that people love and these certain channel stuff that they don't love. So for example, in our how to make the best pizza recipes, Maybe you're going to make five different pizza recipes and every time you use the word pepperoni, it doesn't rank up here. Because you know what? People didn't love that. Where do you see it? In the content that could use work. This is the stuff that didn't really work too well. Well, why not? Lowest average watch time, lowest retention, 
lowest like ratio, lowest views, videos losing subs. What does that mean? Well, people didn't really engage with our content. Why not? Do we just not make it? No, we go and we understand why that these things not work. What's going on here? Could we do something better to improve it? So things are always going to be up here. So pepperoni lands up down here. Don't make pepperoni recipes. Only make the stuff that works up here. Now another section in the middle is called the top search terms. What are people searching to get to your channel, to get the information? What are the click rates for your end screen? The card click rates. What does this, all this tells you? Well, these are the search terms. So if I make more videos with these search terms, guess what? More views, more subscribers. End screens. You can see how when I'm referring to certain elements in my end screens, they're working better than other end screens. The call to subscribe on our end screen isn't really working. We're not getting much out of this. But best for viewers seems to be doing a lot better. Channel seems to be doing a lot better. On your cards, polls. Look at this. 71% of people are engaging in polls. We're going to make more polls. Playlist is doing okay. Not so bad, but not as good as polls. So we're going to use more polls in our videos. So you see how all this information really helps you understand the second D. Are you delivering? Because when you deliver, that is when distribution happens. And remember, this is for 30 days. We can even drop it down to 60 and 90 days. I always look at this on my personal channel between 30 days, and then I look at it at 90 days. I want to smooth out any highs, smooth out any lows, and just get an idea of what's actually working. So I look at my content to double down on, look for those trends, what are the search terms, and what didn't work so well. Down here, well, I see a little bit of information. I'm using a lot of characters, but look down here. Items to improve upon. Here it says to me, okay, there's videos without cards. Uh-oh. 12 videos don't have an end screen, and 6 videos are not added to a playlist. I can go into each one of these and instantly fix it straight from here. So it always keeps a good housekeeping in check. Channel order tool is your... The, <laughs> It's almost your savior. It's the best thing that you need for your channel because it's the unemotional version that tells you what's working and what isn't working. So now, we have done the first D. We have been discovered. We have done the second D. We are delivering. We're spending lots and lots of time in our channel order tool to understand what's working and what isn't working. And we're constantly giving our audience the stuff that's working. They're loving it. They're giving us subscribers and they're giving us views. That is what it's all about. And when you do that well enough, once you spend a lot of time doing this, you're going to go into your achievements and you're going to start unlocking achievements. We've unlocked the 500,000 subscriber achievement. And don't worry, this is customized for your channel. So if you haven't hit a certain achievement, don't think you have to wait till 500,000. But now, why this is important? Because when you unlock an achievement, it generates a certificate. And this certificate is a great way to help build your audience. Here is why. When you have an achievement and you share it on Facebook, on Instagram, on Twitter, on LinkedIn, wherever you share it, people are going to say, wow, I'm part of this journey. Your audience is part of that journey. They love being part of people's journey. They retweet. They like. They give, give you a shout out for being successful. Well done. And that grows your community because other people see this and go, oh, I don't know about this vidIQ channel. Let me go check it out. There must be lots of value. This is social proof that everything works and has come together beautifully for you. So spend some time in your achievement. Understand what you're breaking into. You share those certificates. Be excited about it. And then look at your top performing months. What are your targets? Use that as a bit of a motivational thing. Can I reach my goals? How many more days am I away from reaching my next milestones? We take care of all that for you so that you are proud to share your successes. And when you do, make sure you tag vidIQ on your social media so we're happy to retweet. We're happy to celebrate in your success and your milestones. Okay, so I pushed the wrong button. I told you that was going to happen. I was listening to it on my phone as I was getting back into action here. But okay, eh, well, you know, that's what it happens. Okay, so 
that was a lot. There was a lot of information coming at you fast and furious. Um, I saw a lot of people were still asking for sub for sub and go check out my channel and let's be friends and other nonsense. It destroys your channel. If you want to do that, go for it, but don't do it here. And then don't expect your channel to work when you decide to finally put in the real effort. Sub for sub destroys your channel. I, we just cannot be any clear about that. Um, it's not about spamming the chat. That our mods are taking care of. But it's about your channel. You're putting in all the work. You're making videos. You're uploading. You're choosing your titles. And now you're destroying your channels by getting random people to go to your channel who are not going to watch your stuff. What does that sell YouTube? It tells YouTube you have a rubbish channel. What's YouTube going to do? Uh, not promote your videos. If nobody's watching them and you've got lots of subscribers, it means, well, you, your, your stuff isn't so great. So I, I just cannot say this enough. Stop asking for sub for sub. Because I'll tell you what will happen. And I've seen this a bazillion times. You start off by saying sub for sub and your channel's going from 10 to 100 and 100 to 500. And now you're thinking, okay, great. This YouTube thing is awesome. And I'm going to do more of it. And then you really put in the work and guess what? You already told YouTube that your channel sucks. So in which case, all that works for nothing. So don't do that. Stop asking for sub, for sub, for sub, for sub, for sub, for sub. That is just going to destroy your channel. End of story. Uh, does that make sense? Does, does anybody still want subs in the chat? Or you can leave. I mean, is that like just really subs for subs in the chat? Seriously, still? <sighs> Okay, so here's what we're going to do now. Now we're going to go into real questions of people who really want to know how to grow their channels. And now we've got rid of all the nonsense people. Have they left already? Have we said bye? Bye? Yeah, has everyone gone already? Okay, all right, good. So now we can get into the real question. So the way this is going to work is basically you're going to hit the chat and you're going to go at vidIQ so I can see you and then ask a question. I'm going to mispronounce your name. I'm going to probably miss your question. You can ask it again. As I'm answering one question, the chat is running up and down here. So if I miss your question, I apologize up front. But let's get um, let's get some questions in and we can get started chatting. Remember, if you want the free version of vidIQ, we have one. If you want to unlock 30 days of vidIQ, in the description, go and grab that. Free vidIQ for you to use. No problem. Absolutely for you. Okay. So let's start the first question. So Bat Raptor Games, I upgraded to boost and I still don't know what to do next. Oh, uh, we, we, we just spent an hour telling you what to do. So what you're going to do is when this thing is done, you rewind to the beginning and then do everything I've, I've just told you to do. And that will help you because that is literally the step by step guide to getting those views, getting those subscribers, getting everything going. Just watch this. That's why we spend time doing this for that exact reason. Um, Javier Fernandez, did I butcher that too badly? Um, so, <coughs> oh, Javier. <laughs> See, I'm learning. Okay. Um, any tips for a title? Yes. Good, 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 good question. So, a title. We all want to stuff as many keywords into the title as possible, right? The problem is that, well, your title becomes very awkward. So you can say something like, <clears throat> let me find something weird. Okay. So you can say something, fidget spinner, fidget cube, comma, um, entertainment, comma, best thing to buy. Okay. That may be good words for the algorithm, but that's a terrible title. Nobody wants to click on that. So the way I look at titles is that put your keywords in, but write it for humans, not for the machine. Remember, YouTube already knows what your video is about. It automatically captions your videos. It watches frame by frame of your videos. It knows what's going on. You don't have to tell the machine too much. Yes, put your keywords in your title, but don't focus on making a title that isn't clickable. What you want to do is have your title and your thumbnail in combination. They've got to work well together. So your thumbnail gets somebody to stop and say, hey, what's this? and look over at your title and then decide whether to click or not. That's why we have the thumbnail preview tool, which shows you the title and the thumbnail together so you can see what it looks like in search. You can see what it looks like when it gets served up to the community. You can see what it looks like on the home page. And then you got to say to yourself, would you click on that title? And if the answer is yes, great. 
If the answer is a bit, well, uh, I'm looking at my competitors, um, I'll probably click on one of theirs, rework your title. Great question. It's all about putting keywords in key phrases, but not about making it so awkward that a human doesn't want to read it or to watch the video. Okay. Game Sony. Can I be successful with the free version of vidIQ? Absolutely. There is so much value in that free version of vidIQ. Absolutely. We have seen channels. We know of channels that are huge, like literally millions of subscribers. They've got the free version. It gives them enough information. We all do YouTube slightly differently. So if that gives you the information you want, go for it. That's why we made it free. We want you to succeed. So go and use it. The free version gives you a certain amount of information. If you're finding that useful, well, use the description below. In the link in the description below, go and grab the 30-day free, unlock the rest of vidIQ, and then make a decision. So hey, when I was using the free, it showed me this. Using the paid, it shows me a whole bunch of stuff, and I really like this information. I'm going to keep using it. Or so much stuff, you know, you know what? I wasn't really using this. I've watched this training a couple of times, and I'm still not getting it. Cool. Go back to free. When you're ready, then just change it. Absolutely. Okay. Let me refresh the screen and see what else is coming up here. Refresh. Okay. TN Boom says, gaming channel tips. I'm not sure that's the whole question. Was there, was there some more? Ask me a specific question and I can help you. Saying, how do I do a good gaming channel? I'm going to refer you to a video that we have on our vidIQ channel. I spent a lot of time with Dan, who's our residence gamer and he's like, knows everything about gaming. We made a whole video about how to blow up your gaming channel. Go and watch that. Because uh, you didn't really ask me a specific question. So I can't really help you with that beyond sending you over there. Okay. Um, so Dripsy, I am Aiden. Yeah, sort of right. Yeah. Can you say how much should I upload or how many days apart? Okay, good question. So the, the, answer, the question is basically, do you do more videos or less videos? And if you do less videos, does it hurt you? And how far apart should you space them? So YouTube only cares about one thing. Well, two things. It cares about making money, which is it does by serving ads. And it cares about the viewer. It wants to give the viewer the best experience that there is. So if you make amazing quality videos and you upload it every week, one video a week, that's great. Your users love it. They can't wait for your video. They want to watch it. They give you a thumbs up. They write a comment. They share. They rewind the video. They fast forward the video. All of those are signals to YouTube to say, hey, good video over here. And YouTube starts to promote it. If you make 10 rubbish videos that nobody cares about, bad quality, nobody's engaging with, what are you telling YouTube? That, uh, well, there's not really good value here. So YouTube is not going to promote it. Now, we, you know, there's a channel for, called Mark Rober. Go check him out. Um, really good channel. He does one video a month. But that video is so amazing that it just blows up every single time. So it's not about quantity. It's about quality. And if you've got a big library of stuff and you want to go after search traffic, yes, upload more and more and more and more videos. But each one of them needs to be amazing quality. Otherwise, YouTube's not going to love you for it. Because you know what? Your viewer experience isn't great. If your viewer experience isn't great, YouTube is certainly not going to promote that. Okay. So um, remember, if you've got a question, tag at vidIQ. I'm kind of seeing a lot of questions coming in. I'll get to as many as I can see here. Um, right. Satyam AK says, do I need to give a big description for the video? Okay. Good question. I've seen this coming up a couple of times. When it comes to metadata, which is what the description is, what the tags are, what the title is, what the thumbnail is, all that is bits of information that you're helping YouTube to understand more about your video. Now, YouTube does a pretty darn good job knowing what your video is about. But when you can help it along and saying, hey, in my description, this is what the video is about. And remember, as I said in the video, uh, the first line of your description is critical. Why? Because when you look at your videos on your phone, guess what comes up? The first line is the preview. When you look on a tablet, maybe one or two lines. So make the most out of your first two lines of your description. But then underneath it, use things like chapters. Use things that I've got timestamps so people can jump around your video to the point that they want. Also include things like playlist. If somebody's interested in this video, maybe they're interested in that video, link that in the description. Help YouTube connect the dots as well. 
The more we feed YouTube, the better it is. I've seen a lot of people do nothing in the description or one line or just their social media feeds, um, like links to go there. Well, then you're not really helping. YouTube does have a lot of information, but all of these things are available for us as content creators. Let's use them. Feed the beast. Okay, great question. Hopefully that helped a lot of people there as well. Okay, Cuban, Cuban, what? Cuban fever. Okay. Will posting my videos on relevant Facebook pages help? Do you have any other suggestion? So always post where it's relevant, where your audience is, and where you can add value. If you go into Facebook groups and simply drop your links in, first of all, you'll probably get banned. When you're going to go to these closed Facebook groups, which is all about helping each other, all that happens is you get the wrong viewer. So there's no point in doing that. The best way to promote your videos is add value. Go onto social media, go onto something like Twitter, see who's asking questions around the topic that you're interested in, help the conversation. If somebody's asking a question and you can answer it, help. What they're gonna do? Oh, who is this person that keeps coming up in my feed? Click on profile. Oh, there's a link to their YouTube channel, click. If you've got a specific video that answers a question, feel free to share it if you ask permission. If you talk to, say, hey, I didn't wanna spam you, but um, if you, I did do a video on this on my channel, I can DM it to you, okay? That's a nice subtle way of saying, hey, I've got some information for you. Fish where the fish are, as we say, right? There's no point in going on LinkedIn and dropping million links to your videos if your audience isn't there. Link, first of all, LinkedIn is going to deprioritize your videos anyways. And what's gonna happen is you're gonna get the wrong crowd coming to your videos. They're gonna watch one or two seconds. Ah, this is not what they thought. They're gonna leave. And guess what that does to the video? It really hurts the video's performance. So always, always, always share in the place that, that it makes sense to do that. Okay, let's refresh the screen. Um, okay, so you don't, um, Pharaoh's Gaming, you don't have to ask it a bazillion times, one after each other, we'll get there eventually. So, yeah. Okay, um, right, Reed Bailey, thanks. It looks like a great tool, absolutely try it, you'll love it. Um, I want to make more videos, I don't wanna spend hours of my day deciphering data, so the channel order tool, just live in that. You'll you'll see what it makes a big difference. Okay, Miriam Q, how do you judge what is a rubbish quality you're talking about? Well, watch time. Great question. And uh, that was a superb question, Miriam. Basically, it boils down to watch time. Go look at your analytics. Go find that video. Go to something called audience retention and watch time. And in audience retention, you're going to see at which point people drop off your videos. If you're not getting 50% and above, what does that mean? People are not interested in your quality of your video. They're dropping off way too early. Then you go and you analyze that. Well, hold on a second. Is my entire video rubbish or is it just certain section? So you go into your analytics, go into the retention, and you start looking. And then you'll see a graph that does that or a graph that does this. And if that graph is a big hockey stick shape with everything drops off right at the beginning, what does that mean? Your intro wasn't good. People weren't hooked onto your content right at the beginning. So work on that. If you can get people to watch your intro and watch some of your content, then that line's gonna be longer. And the more that you keep people engaged with your video, the longer it's going to be, the more they're gonna be excited by your video. That determines good quality. That's one of the signals, I should say, that tells YouTube, hey, good quality videos, people are watching this. Think about it for yourself. You're gonna watch a video and it's absolute rubbish. You're not gonna watch the whole thing. You're gonna leave immediately. But if you watch a video that's absolutely amazing, you're gonna watch the whole thing. You're gonna rewind to the part that you liked. You're gonna maybe even leave a comment, maybe even share that with somebody else. Say, hey, check this out. All of those show good quality video signals to YouTube. Okay, good question. All right, let me rephrase here. Oh, rephrase, refresh. Um, okay, so Harmony Love. I used the Boost Optimizer videos okay, um, and I even, uh, hold on, where did you go? Huh? Oh, okay. Um, the, but I published, I don't receive any views. Why? Okay. You've got to stop thinking that there's a wizard. Okay. It's not a wizard that you go, I click this button. I got this SEO score. Where are my views? It does not work like this. I strongly suggest if you weren't here from the beginning, go and watch this training. That is how you use the tools. It's not about, you know, it's like having a car. So you bought a car and then you go, ah, oh, you know, I, I cannot believe it that I didn't um, get the car loaded with groceries. Uh, no, no, you actually got to get into the car and drive to get the groceries. Like, well, well, it should, should uh, why, does, why does it not go anywhere? 
because you actually got to put in gas or petrol for the rest of the world. You actually got to put something in the car to make it go. This is what the tool is. It's a tool that helps you with your analytics, helps you understand your audience, but you have to do the work. So just by having Boost doesn't mean anything unless you're prepared to put in the effort. So if, I'm not, by the way, I'm not saying that you're not. I'm just merely kind of commenting on this. Go back and watch this training because that's exactly what you need to do to get those views. Okay, hopefully that makes sense. All right, um, let me refresh. Let's do some more. Let's do this. The Tales of Reddit says, um, how do you suggest we use the complete 500 words in the tag? So don't spam your tag, number one. Uh, number two, put a couple of keywords that are relevant to you and then click the vidIQ tool to tell you what else is ranking? What are the high ranking words? What's the competition like? And select the ones that you want to get ranked for. Again, all of this together with your description, together with your title and your thumbnail as a whole package determines your video. And once people see it, then it's down to you. It's that quality of you. If you're delivering, you remember that second D? If you're delivering, then you're going to get more of those signals. Okay, I am refreshing one more time. Let's get some more questions in here. Um, Clara, Clara, Clara Estelle. Um, am, um, am I supposed to wear darker or lighter clothing when filming? And is my background supposed to be bright or dark? It depends on your content and it depends what kind of mood you're trying to set here. So there isn't a golden rule. And I think that's what a lot of people are looking for, like a yes, no. Like do this and this will happen, do that and that will happen. You gotta decide on your audience. You gotta, the most important thing is people want to be able to be engaged within your video. You wanna, be, they wanna connect with you, which is why videos that do a face-to-face -face do a lot better than things that are just over the head, kind of just showing your fingers, um, your, your hands working, like a cooking video, for example. Now, when you mix the two worlds and you have a personality and then they cut over into a top shot of somebody doing some cooking, beautiful. People want to connect with you. So if you make it easy, if they can see the whites of your eyes, if they can see your expressions, great. That's the stuff that you want to be focusing on. Good audio, that's important. Because if I'm standing like this, it doesn't matter what I'm now saying, because, well, shoot, like that. Okay, you see? So that's that gets frustrating. If I go away and I can't hear you, it doesn't matter what I'm wearing, what I'm looking at, it just doesn't, because you just can't hear anything. So it's not about yes or no, it's about what works within your content. Okay. Um, all right, let me refresh one more time. Da, 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 da. Um, okay, someone asked about a Spanish um, information. Yes, we do have a Spanish channel, a vidIQ Espanol. So you can go check that out. Lots of videos there in Spanish just for you. Uh, ba, 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 ba. Okay, sorry, just refreshing. I'm seeing a whole bunch of questions coming in again. Um, all right, Swick, um, no, Swick Rit Art. Did I mess that up horribly, right? Okay, can you give tips for mobile users um, and an art channel? See, so, like, I'm, I, I can, I just don't know what the question is. So, do you need to have good art for a mobile? F yes, you do. Um, you know, do you need to make it mobile accessible? Yes. Do you need to have good thumbnails that pop on a tiny little screen? Absolutely. Good titles, for sure. Make sure that you use a title that catches people's opinion. I, I, sorry, I don't know what the question actually is because giving tips is, well, we've been doing tips for the last hour or so. So I'm just not sure. Okay. Um, Xavi Puzzles. I don't even, Xavi Puzzle? I told you I'm bad at names. What's your opinion about organizing a draw in order to gain more audience? No, don't, 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 don't do that. Basically, you're saying competitions, subscribe to my channel and then you could also win a whatever. Don't do that. First of all, it's against YouTube terms of service. So let's start off right there. YouTube does not allow you to artificially inflate your numbers. Also remember, if I'm going to send you a thousand new subscribers who just entered, just subscribed to your channel because they want to win whatever it is, are they going to watch any of your videos? Nope. Are they coming back to your channel? Uh, nope. In which case, what's the point? YouTube now will say, hey, this channel looks great. Oh, hold on a second. A thousand subscribers, but two views per video, something's fishy. So why do it? So definitely, definitely not. Don't do that as an incentive. Hey, subscribe to my channel and you could win whatever it may be. That used to work back in 2016. Uh, certainly not something you would want to do now. Okay. Um, da, 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 da. Let's see. 
Um, okay, so Ray, um, Ray KK Games says, will putting hashtags get more views? So hashtags are super weird, right? Hashtags are great because you can link your content to other videos. So if I have a technology channel, I put in hashtag Samsung as an example, hashtag Apple. The problem with that is that other video, that somebody clicks on that, they're going away from my channel. They're going to see other people's content. Now, it does work in reverse as well. Somebody else put in Samsung, maybe they'll land up on my video. I don't know. I'm still not convinced about hashtag. The only hashtag I like to use in my video is my own hashtag. So I've made up my own for my technology channel. And then basically, that's the only hashtag I use. Why? Because if somebody clicks on that hashtag, only my videos pop up. And if my videos pop up, odds are pretty good that they're going to watch another one of my videos. And that's what YouTube wants to see. Okay. Good question about hashtag. Uh, but Karen, uh, thank you again. No problem. Sorry about your Wi-Fi, but thank you for hanging out here. You rock. Astro Image, how you doing? All right, let's see. Okay, Jer Bear Beast, how much money can you make? Oh, lots. Okay, next question. Um, let's see some more questions. Let's have any other questions. Anything else? Uh, da, da, da. Awesome. <laughs> okay, that's that's the name of the person. Um, does the offer to get thirty days free of paid VidIQ expire if I don't get it soon? Um, yeah, you, you basically you unlock the thirty days from the time you put in that coupon or by the time you sign you sign up. So only activate it when you're ready to use it. Don't activate it now because then the time starts now if you're not ready for it right now. Okay. Um, Ing M. Hassan says, um, could I make a mixed channel? Yes. Um, some educational videos and how to get, okay. So I think I kind of get what you're saying. Could you make a channel about lots of topics? If that's kind of what I'm feeling you're saying, um, or maybe all of them are under the educational category. Look, as long as they've got a specific niche, so don't make an education video about how to, I don't know. Um, how to work out the rectangle of a square, I don't know. And then followed by how to cook a pizza and followed by um, what, you, what you did this morning as a vlog, and followed by a travel vlog, followed back by another science questions. Okay, because then the audience is all over the place. But if you're going to make a how-to educational channel and you can put lots of topic under the how-to education kind of as an umbrella, yeah, that should be fine. You can have lots of topics. People will come to you because they know that you're going to provide them the answer. We always say be in your niche, but then niche within the niche. In other words, my niche on my personal channel is technology, but technology is so wide, it could be anything. So what I do is I niche within the niche and I talk about specific items, how to get faster internet, how to get the best router, what the best settings to get you, no buffering, things like that. So that's very specific within the technology niche. The more you niche, the better it, the better it is for you. Okay. Okie dokie. Let's do a couple of more before my coffee runs out. By the way, if you haven't given the stream a thumbs up yet, now would be an amazing time to do that whilst I have a sip of coffee. Mm. Okay, so uh, let's see some more questions here. So Anna says, Anna Franzolini, I cannot do names, right. What happens when I delete a playlist? Does it change, does it damage my playlist? Um, is there a real reason to delete a playlist? Um, I have lots of playlists and I just leave them. If they're old, doesn't matter. As long as I'm, yeah, unless they're working against your channel. Like you used to talk about certain content and now you no longer talk about that. Then maybe rename it. I, I try not, wherever possible, I try not to delete something of YouTube. Simply because you never know. You never know at which point YouTube might decide that that keyword is hot and is going to start um, serving out that content. So if you delete it, you're not giving yourself the opportunity. I haven't seen channels really play too much of a negative role on YouTube, but I would experiment and see see what it does. Unless you have a really good reason to, to get rid of playlists, just leave them. What I'd like to do is make sure my homepage on my channel has only the relevant stuff so that people land on my page, they go, oh, he talks about this. Oh, and this, and this. Okay, great. I know that I'm in the right place. Okay. Um, what is okay? I better refresh some more. Um, come on, reload, reload, reload. Let's do this. Um, hey, Cockland Old TV, just subscribe. 
Thank you for doing that. See, if I catch your name, oh, I'm going to get it. Right. Um, chill music. One keyword with high search volume, but hard to rank. Opposite one keyword with no search volume. What do you do next? Um, okay, let me just read that again. One keyword with a high search volume. Uh, hey, Daryl, thanks for subscribing, but hard to rank. Okay, so I would, okay, so I see what you're saying. Like, should you go for something that's got high search volume, but also high competition or no search volume and therefore no competition? Well, I would kind of be in the middle of that. So the way I look at my videos is to say, when I'm doing my research, by the way, well done for doing your research. When I do my research, hey, it's Danny, thank you for subscribing. When I do my research, I look at this and I say, okay, am I interested in this topic? Because I got to be passionate about this topic first, because if I'm not, well, then there's no audience, right? If I know that I'm passionate about this, this topic, I then go on to Google and I do a good old search. Do other people care about this topic? Lots of hits come up. Okay, good. Another indication. I go to YouTube and I do my keyword research. Okay, lots of competition or no competition, lots of search volume or no. I kind of use them all as a mix together. Don't, excuse me, don't make the mistake of thinking one thing is a yes or no, one thing is right or one thing is wrong. Because remember, different countries, different search volumes, different algorithms, data changes so rapidly. So I would absolutely do, a, the best thing to do is to do the keyword search as I showed you in your search, in the YouTube search. Then you scroll down, you see how many other videos are there, sorted by the most recent, only videos in the last year. Have people made content about this recently? If no, well, maybe it's not a thing. As I showed you in the in the training earlier, go to that video, those ranking videos, and see what's the VPH. Are they still getting views today? What are the views per hour? If you missed all of that, that's where you should be spending a lot of time on in that research phase. Very glad to see that you're doing that research. So I'm afraid there isn't a yes, no, do this, don't do that answer, because it really depends per genre, per industry. It depends on the keyword, depends on the audience. Uh, all of those, but you're doing the right stuff. Go and look at the training where I speak about um, the the research is probably near the beginning because that's the first D for being discovered. Okay. Uh, ba -ba -ba -ba. Right, JP, uh, JDP Gaming. My views are skyrocketing lately. Well done, I made custom thumbnails, superb. I used rank tags, great, but my sub count's going nowhere. I'm not asking for subs. Oh, my videos are not a non-commentary. Okay, so I'm not sure what it means by my non-commentary. You know, with like you just play the game. I'm assuming it's a gaming channel. You just play the games and you don't actually talk. Well, then if you're not going to tell people to subscribe, guess what? I'm not going to subscribe. Remember that if you, even if you're not talking in your video, there's nothing stopping you from putting up a little graphic that says, hey, don't forget to subscribe. Call to action is very, very important. That's why when I do my videos, everybody waits till the end and they do, okay, hey, the golden, thanks for subscribing. Everyone waits till the end and they say, okay, if you like this content, subscribe. Don't forget to like and subscribe. The reality is that most people don't make it to 100% of your video. So I do my call out towards the beginning. I do my little hook and I tell them, hey, this is what this channel is about. If you like this content, subscribe. Let's get started. Nice and quick to, so people realize to subscribe. And that seems to work. You need to ask for those subscriptions in some way. If it's not you talking, put it, use, do it with a graphic. Okay. Um, okay, Liam, um, question, Leo Menzies, que Men Menzies, 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 did I say that right? Okay, question, I'm in my channel, uh, about section, and it says on one tab membership, I click on it and it goes away, why? I don't know, I'm um, sorry, don't know how to help you with that. Um, look, have, does your channel offer memberships, or are you trying to, or does it just say memberships and disappears? I've never seen that, so I don't know. Sorry. Okay. Uh, more questions. Doc Rome says, how do I draw people in my YouTube channel? Thumbnail and title. Make thumbnails that people want to stop what they're doing and say, oh, what's this? Go look at, they look at your title and they go, oh, wow, that looks awesome. Click. Okay. That's the, especially if you're a small channel. If you're still a small channel, YouTube doesn't have that much information on you. You're still playing in the search kind of game where people are going to be doing searches and you want your channel to pop up. In which case, even more important for your good thumbnail and a good title. Go use the vidIQ preview tool as I've showed you in here. And that's how you kind of see whether your stuff is clickable, whether people will click based on your competition, your video above you and your video below you. That's critical. That's how you draw attention to your channel. Okay. 
<laughs> Let's see. Okay, I got a super chat from FC, uh, MC Joe Games. Advice on doing an intro competition for my for my viewers. Um. Okay. So is it basically, you're not saying. Okay, so you're not asking them to subscribe to enter, right? So it's just a competition. So what I would do if what I would do essentially when it comes to a competition as a giveaway is let them know that it's coming up on social media. Use your community post to say, hey, I've got a big thing coming up. Can't wait to share it with you. You can make a little video. It can be a short video and stick that in your, make it as unlisted even, put it in your community post. Um, lots of ways to kind of really engage with that audience and you can start dropping hints into this so if you know the competition is coming up at the end of the month say um, when you do your next video you can say oh and you've got to stay tuned at the end of the month I've got something happening however there's a big however remember the videos on YouTube live forever so if somebody watches your video a year later are they going to wait till the end of the month as well so you kind of got to be careful I would play maybe with the descriptions because you can go and edit those um, but at the end of the day community tab social media is probably your best way to say big things happening on my channel come over and of course do a live stream live stream is great live stream is all we're doing now hey guys today we're going to give away da, 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 and off and off you go so hopefully that that will help you um all right i am refreshing for the last time because my voice is absolutely going now how long have we been going for anybody know anybody seen the clock i think an hour and a bit or something or an hour and a half Okay, um, da, 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 da. let's see, let, well, no more questions coming in. Hey, Adrian, just hit that subscribe button. Awesome, thank you for doing that. Okay, oh, there we go. B, um, Bane TV, how does live streams compare, how does live streams compare to uploads when counting views and subscribers? It's a regular video, so essentially watch time counts, views counts, and remember, when I'm finished with this live stream, what I'm going to do is I'm going to save it, it's going to live on my channel as a regular video. So people who weren't able to join this live stream can just do it at another time. So live streams are great because you get good watch time, good retention. If you can keep your audience engaged, you can talk, you can have a lovely conversation, build up that community. That's the most important thing. When it comes to YouTube, you are the brand. People want to hang out with you. So make it all about the people. I make it a point, even with my channel, it's, I get lots of comments, thankfully, and I'm thankful for each one of them. And it's difficult, but I try to reply to each and every single comment as best as I possibly can. Um, I love messing with the trolls. Those are great fun. And, but I love seeing people saying thank you or people saying, hey, how do I do this? And then I help them some more because it's about building that community. And it's amazing when you do that, people subscribe, people come for your next video because that's why they, they want to be part of that community. So use your live stream as part of a community building. And then, of course, watch time, retention, um, views, all of those count. <clears throat> all right, I'm dead. There was it. That was my gone. Um, Defense Ninja, just subscribe. Thank you for hanging out here. Guys, thank you again for hanging out. Astro, um, Imager, Liam, thank you for being here. And you'll be here for quite a while. Um, I see a lot of the mods are still here. Okay, guys, if you want more of this stuff, because we can't do this all day, every day, because my voice is pretty much gone. Remember, we have a Discord server. So in the description below, go and join our Discord. This kind of conversation happens every single day on the Discord. Don't have to wait for a Wednesday. Go and hang out in the Discord. Go listen to Tube Talk. Tomorrow's episode is all about algorithms, how to get your channel ranked, your videos views, all of those. And we're going to bust a lot of the YouTube myth that exists around algorithms. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel, of course, because you're awesome. Give this video a thumbs up if you liked it, because if you did, then that's cool. We'd love to see that. And I guess we will see you on the next time. Tomorrow, by the way, we're doing channel audits. We're supposed to do it yesterday, but for obvious reasons, we've moved it to tomorrow. And tomorrow is going to be great fun. Rob's back. Um, Dan's there. Travis is there. Savage may or may not make an appearance. Lots of fun on that stream. Thank you for doing it. Thank you for hanging out here. Muds, you have been amazing as always. That's just uh, always love, love to have you guys hanging out here. On your way out, hit that thumbs up button as you're saying goodbye. And I will wave to you awkwardly as we uh, do, do, do that. This is a bad idea. Okay, but, but thanks. Th 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 thanks for being here. Good luck with your journey. Keep us posted. Uh, yeah, I got to push another button, I suppose. Hey, okay. One more time. Awkward wave. Bye. <laughs>